She spent 50 years moving between TV, film, streaming, and stage. But Helen Hunt still feels the sting of Hollywood ageism and sexism. Here's what she's been up to lately. The 1990s was a brilliant time for sitcoms, and when it came to official accolades, Helen Hunt's Mad About You raked in all the awards and nominations. From the Emmys to the Golden Globes to the SAG Awards, Hunt was riding high on the TV A-list. Hunt should have had her choice of what to do next. Are we gonna do this or not? Well, that's what I'm hoping. But while she did appear in some major motion pictures, like Twister, and was snapped up for one of Netflix's must-watch hit thrillers, her career didn't play out the way anyone expected. It's worth mentioning, however, that Hunt seems absolutely fine with it. In 2008, she did an interview with the New York Times and was asked what she thought about the relative trickle of work she'd had since Mad About You ended. Hunt replied, I suddenly wasn't offered parts that were worth walking away from the most compelling thing I'd ever been involved with, which was my family. Maybe my dirty little secret is this is the life I'd been wanting. It's no secret that Hollywood has some outdated and pretty gross views about older women. She used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. So when Helen Hunt hit 40, she sat down for an eye-opening interview with the Daily Beast and admitted that she'd taken a good, hard look at what she wanted her career to be. Hunt shared, When I wasn't getting acting jobs all the time that I liked, I was writing and writing and writing. If she wasn't going to be offered interesting parts, she'd write her own. Hunt went on to tell the New York Times, I think it's worse than 10 years ago, so we can't even tell ourselves it's slowly evolving. Women who say it's not okay are wet blankets or sore losers. Now I know you've had a couple of hits in the past few years, but I've accidentally inhaled more film than you've ever had your face on. Hunt had been dealing with this kind of prejudice for a long time. In 2008, she told The Guardian she decided to get behind the camera to create movies instead of just starring in them, because there just weren't as many opportunities as she would have liked, saying, while it would have been nice to have had more opportunities, I'm not really sure if they were out there to have. According to what Hunt told The Guardian in 2022, her experiences with the paparazzi had left her feeling rattled. She confessed, There were a couple of years when I was a little spooked. I was afraid that I could never unring that bell. For Hunt, it confirmed her belief that she never really wanted fame. She only wanted to be able to create in peace. So she decided she simply wasn't going to give the tabloids what they wanted, admitting, I just became very boring. Did that decision hurt her career? Hunt has been hesitant to draw a direct line between catering to the paparazzi and keeping a high profile in Hollywood, but in 2019, she told The Guardian that, even after all her success, she worries, saying, I can't cure the will I work again thing that every actor has. I'm always sure it's the last job. Hunt was in a long-term relationship with House of Lies and Valley of the Boom writer Matthew Carnahan. And when she spoke with the Daily Beast in 2015, she revealed they had something in the works, saying, It's a musical, but a hallucinogenic one. It's totally crazy. We did a little work on it to present it to the network, and I felt completely out of my comfort zone. Then, in 2017, the couple split up after 16 years together. In Touch Weekly spoke with some of those in the know who said it wasn't a clean break and that Hunt had been pretty sure that Carnahan had been cheating on her, despite his repeated denials. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Hunt hasn't said much, but the breakup may have come with the end of the mysterious musical project, since she hasn't mentioned it since. It turns out that starring in a wildly popular television show and several blockbuster movies doesn't give you as much clout as you might think. Even though she starred in Twister, Helen Hunt had no luck getting a sequel off the ground. Does anyone ever mistake you for Linda Hunt? No, no they don't. In an interview with The Guardian, she talked about her idea for Twister 2, which she intended to direct. For co-stars and co-writers, she wanted Davi Diggs and Rafael Casal, adding diversity to the team both behind and in front of the camera. But Hunt explained, It was literally July 2020. The United States was on fire with the beginning of a 400-year overdue racial reckoning, and Me Too hadn't been that long ago. There were three of us, each representing a minority of our own, one of us having starred in the original movie, and we couldn't get a meeting. It was sobering. Diggs also spoke out about Hollywood's refusal to even hear their pitch, and to say he wasn't impressed is putting it lightly. 
In 2023, he told Insider, It didn't happen, and the reasons that it didn't happen are potentially shady. But shady in the way that we know the industry is shady. Hunt's father, Gordon Hunt, was a wildly prolific director, writer, acting coach, and actor. He was an island of calm in a sea of chaos. Helen credits him with inspiring her love of acting, and theater in particular, once telling The Guardian that when he took her to see Godspell at five years old, she knew she'd found her calling. Decades later, she said, Every time I see a play, I think of him, because he was always so excited when the lights began to go down. And I am too. Gordon died in 2016. It was later revealed that, although he'd been diagnosed with Parkinson's, he'd continued working and teaching until just before his death. Helen spoke about her father with a Hollywood reporter, and there was no shortage of accolades for his work not only in sitcoms, including Mad About You, which he helped direct, but in creating some of the biggest cartoons of the last few decades, and even some video games. Still, the most poignant statement came from his daughter, who said, If you asked 100 people who knew him, 100 of them would say he was the kindest man they ever knew. One of the big reasons that Helen Hunt has been off the radar lately is that some of her recent projects have been disappointing, both critically and at the box office. She directed the 2007 film Then She Found Me, which has a Rotten Tomatoes score of just 51%. Critics were even less kind three years prior when A Good Woman, her remake of Oscar Wilde's Lady Windermere's Fan, scored just 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. You shut your eyes to everything that isn't perfect. You're just asking to fall into a hole. Fast forward to 2017, when Hunt was starring in I Love You, Daddy, as the ex-wife of the movie's male lead, played by Louis C.K. He also wrote and directed the Woody Allen-esque picture, which tells the story of a blossoming romance between his 17-year-old daughter and his 68-year-old director. The movie came out around the time that C.K. faced allegations of sexual misconduct, and it was immediately removed from theaters. No one was really heartbroken. The New Yorker called it a disgusting movie that should never have been acquired for distribution in the first place. More recently, Hunt returned to the small screen in 2019, when she and Paul Reiser rebooted Mad About You, continuing their characters' stories 20 years after the show's original end. Unfortunately, the response was disappointing. Both critics and audiences alike were underwhelmed, and there was no second season. Hunt has always made it clear that her priority is her daughter, McKenna Lay, telling People magazine in 2008, It was hard to find a part that was as interesting as watching her grow up. Why go off and pretend to be someone's mother or pretend to be someone's wife, when I finally had the chance to have that experience in my real life? Three years later, Hunt spoke with Vulture. McKenna Lay was now six years old, and Hunt had begun to take parts that allowed her to bring her daughter along. For example, when it came to Soul Surfer, they were like, do you want to go to Oahu and bring your daughter and surf in a movie? I went, okay. The opportunity to be paid and have my family with me and be in heaven was pretty great. Hunt spoke with ESPN around the release of another surfing movie, Ride, and revealed that yes, it was her surfing and her daughter had inspired her to do it. She recalled, I began to think about how vitally important it might be for the moms to get into the water, or whatever their version of getting into the water is. I think you should get an instructor. I don't need some illiterate teenager telling me how to lie on my belly and splash my arms in the water. Clearly, being able to take an active role in her daughter's life means a great deal to Hunt. Although Hunt stepped away from the limelight, she's been working on projects of her own, and it hasn't been easy. She told The Guardian that her film, Then She Found Me, took 10 years to make, and after all her hard work, the distribution company filed for bankruptcy the day before it was released. Hunt remembered, It doesn't take away from the experience of making it, but then you want people to see what you did. So that was hard. That was very hard. In 2008, Hunt was spending a good chunk of her time in class or reading textbooks while waiting on interviews. When she met up with Redbook to talk about Then She Found Me, she shared that she was taking a college class a semester, and that semester, it was philosophy. Hunt explained, Philosophy is studying what you already know and dismantling it. I thought it would be right up my alley. I can't tell you how much it's not me. Fortunately, she was also asked the obvious next question. What's it like being a famous actor and sitting down in a classroom with regular people? Hunt confessed that she actually wasn't really seen as a celebrity, and aside from the occasional person snapping a picture of her, 
she'd managed to achieve a comfortable, sort of near obscurity. Even before Mad About You came to an end for the first time, Hunt was finding time to perform for a more intimate audience. In 1998, she joined a cast that included Paul Rudd and Kira Sedgwick for a Broadway production of William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. In an interview with Playbill, she said, As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be involved in the theater. In 2010, she made headlines for her stint as the stage manager in Thornton Wilder's classic play Our Town, which was notable because the play refers to the character as being male. Hunt is one of only a few women to have played the character in high-profile productions. And the New York Times quoted her expressing her opinion on the matter, saying, What authority do I have, or does any female actor or male actor have, to say what it means to be human? Hunt appeared in Working, a musical, in 2019. And then in 2022, she added another impressive line to her resume when she made her London stage debut. The play was called Eureka Day, and in a surprising bit of casting, Hunt plays an anti-vaxxer who sits on the board of an elite private school that's dealing with a disease outbreak. Reviews for the show, which ran at the iconic Old Vic, were largely positive, and Hunt was lauded for her stage presence and performance.